Hello friends and welcome back to the Scrap Zone. I'm Julie and today I'm going to share with you this super easy mini album made with the Seize the Day paper collection from Close to My Heart. All of the supplies used to create this album will be listed below. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is pre-cut all of your pieces to make this mini album. Now, as I said, it is super easy to put together. You have four basic pieces. Let's start with the base album. All of the album has been cut out of craft paper. And the reason why I chose craft paper was because when you score the paper, it folds really nicely and you don't see the white core. So we're going to start putting together the base cover. Here you see me adding the pattern paper pieces to the inside of the album. I've noted here on the left side that I've already gone ahead and put down the pattern paper piece. And you know what? You should wait until the end because you need to put your pocket in there first. We'll get to that a little later. So now here you see me adding all of those paper pieces to the back side of the album. Now a lot of people wait for this step until they're completely done, but again, this is such a simple album that you are not going to ruin the cover of your album by doing this. And I found that it was a lot easier to lay all of my pattern pieces down when the album was nice and flat. I was able to run my bone folder against the pattern paper to make sure that it's not going to lift. Because this is a mini album, you want to make sure that everything is adhered down really, really nicely. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using just regular liquid glue. I'm making sure that there's enough glue on all of the edges and then I'm using my bone folder and I'm just rubbing it all along both pieces to make sure that it stays down nice and tight. So I'm going to proceed with the back side of this album and then we're going to start putting this little mini album together and it was so much fun to put together. I did use the PML cards that come with the Seize the Day paper collection and that's how this album was created and sized. The finished size is approximately 5 by 7. So we're almost done here with the cover and we're going to flip that over and we're going to start to fold on those crease lines. So those crease lines have been done and they're all listed in the assembly guide. You're just going to fold on each and every one of them and make sure that they're nice and crisp. You make sure that the top and bottom are also lining up with your album cover. So I'm going to do the left and I'm going to do the right and then we are going to start putting this album together. It comes again together super, super easily. So I hope that you enjoy paper crafting because it's something that I enjoy doing pretty much every day. Keeps me busy, keeps me focused, and it's always nice to see a completed project. So next up here is we're going to take the center pieces of this album. Now they've all been clipped together. I've decided to take all of those pieces that correspond to flap number one put them all together including the pattern paper so that's one, that way when I'm putting my book together it's a lot easier and faster and I kind of don't have to worry about which piece goes on next. So here I'm showing you two crease lines and they're about an eighth of an inch uh, apart and again that's to um, make up for the bulk once all of your pictures are going to be inside and I'm just going to gently fold on both of those lines. Now because they're so close it's a little bit tricky. That's why I started very gently and then I'm going back with my bone folder. Now if you don't have this fancy bone folder that I have, you can use your regular one. That's not a problem at all. I just really like this one because it's a left-handed bone folder and uh, there's not a lot of left-handed um, tools to, for crafting. So for me it's just a really nice tool to use when I make mini albums. 
So the other thing that I did do here is I did miter the corners of my flaps and I am going to use double sided tape. Now you can use red line tape, you can use whatever you have, but I just find that double sided tape works best when you're doing a mini album because all of these pieces are interaction, there's, there's a lot of interaction with all of these pieces and you want to make sure they stay down. Now, if this is your first time making a mini album, I would highly recommend adding just a tiny little bit of glue to your edge that you're going to adhere down because if you don't put it down straight right away, you can lift it up and try again. So that's a little tip for people that are brand new at making mini albums. And it has saved me many, many times. So just a little bit of liquid glue on top of your double-sided tape, and then you've got that flexibility to move it around just a little bit. So the next one is the flap number two, and we're gonna adhere it down the very same way. I'm gonna add double-sided tape. Make sure that your double-sided tape is not on the um, score line because you don't want any glue inside that score line it's just going to muck everything up so I'm folding this over here right now and I'm going to adhere that to the top of the mini album I'm gonna pull back my little tape add a little bit of glue just to give me a little bit of um, opportunity to kind of move it around if I have to because we want to center that piece right at the top of the center of this little book. So I'm gonna go back with my bone folder and I'm gonna make sure that everything is nice and flush. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add the pattern piece to the inside of the mini album. Now the reason why I waited until I adhered down both of my flaps is that by added, adding the pattern piece on top, you hide all of the construction for the book. And I also chose this piece of pattern paper because it's really busy, but it's going to be hidden by a lot of other elements. So sometimes when you have a busy print and you don't know what to do with it, you can go ahead and use it in a way that it's going to be either sparse, like not a lot of it, or you're going to add a few elements on top. And that way the colors match, everything is pretty, but the busyness is not right up against in your face so I I like that paper but it's just a little busy for me so the next piece that goes on flap number one is an accordion um, photo mat if you want so I am folding this accordion fo photo mat and it's going to be adhered on the top of flap number one so I'm just folding over on all of the crease line and I've got an extra piece here because I'm working with a 12 by 12 piece of craft paper so I wanted to have an extension to be able to add 4 by 6 photos and 4 by 6 PML cards so here I'm showing you how to adhere that top piece to that accordion element that's going to adhere to the front of flap number one. So very much like every other step, you're going to add your double-sided tape. Make sure that you're not putting that tape against the score line because it's going to interfere and it's not gonna open properly. You're gonna miter those corners and then you're just gonna adhere that to complete a three trifold if you want photo element placement that's going directly on top of flap number one. Make sure when you're adhering this down that again you are not overlapping on the score line. I'm just making sure that everything is nice and secure and it's folding properly and I'm going to adhere it to flap number one on the left hand side of the front cover. So here I'm adding again a little bit of tape and you'll see that double-sided tape is really the way to go. You can try using uh, liquid uh, glue, but I would highly recommend using something that's a little bit more sturdy. So I like to miter my corners. It just makes a nicer finish when you kind of hide the construction of the book with pattern paper. So you have to also make sure that when you are folding your front flap, you've got that little 
one eighth of an inch on the other side and you want to make sure that you're centering all of your pieces on that once it's folded in. So I'm putting that down and I just want to make sure that everything is nice and secure. I'm going to press my little seam down and we're going to continue on with the assembly of this book. So this is a pretty cool element. I really liked how that turned out. So a lot of people at this point would probably just go ahead and build the entire book and I just decided to kind of build it by section. So the first section was the base album. The second section is flap number one with the accordion photo mats. And then section number three is going to be flap number two. And then the rest of the book is we're going to put together a couple of pockets and I'll show you how that's going to work out. So as you can see, when you add your pattern paper on top, you're hiding the construction of that hinge part and everything looks really, really nice and neat. Now, this mini album, you'll be able to put in here easily 15 or more pictures. So I think that it's really perfect for that very memorable trip that you've been on and you just want to highlight those special pictures. So this is definitely a 15 to 20 photos in a little album that really only has two flaps, uh, a left one and a top one. So let's continue on with the assembly and as you can see it's coming together very very nicely and you kind of see the book coming together before it's all completed so you have a chance to really appreciate all of the nice papers that you're putting down and I always test to make sure that everything is nice and straight. So this particular pattern that I'm showing you right here, I've got two of them. So you really have to make sure to look at the length because one of them is a little bit longer for the top flap and you don't want to mix those up. Ask me how I know that. I think I had to cut another one. <laughs> but anyways, so we're moving right along here and you can see all of the beautiful patterns. They're matching perfectly. I'm going to add the inside of the up, upper flap and we're going to continue with, um, I'm pretty sure next up here, we're going to, we are going to add those little pockets. So if you've never, again, done a mini album, it's very important to add those little hinges at the back or those little flaps. It gives you a little bit of space when your flaps are opening and closing and it doesn't bulk up because remember, you're going to add photos in here. So we have to compensate for all of that extra bulk. So I'm going to take here my little pockets and this pocket goes on the front of flap number one. So it's just a square or rectangular shape. It's been scored on three sides. I'm going to go ahead here and add double sided tape on those little um, hinges or little flaps that I've created and I'm just going, you know, I probably should be neater about this process but <laughs> I just slap it on and I call it good. So the other thing you want to do here is you want to remove bulk because bulk equals things that are not going to fold properly. So you want to have everything fold nice and flat. So here I'm folding back on my little flaps and I've noticed here that I didn't quite cut this right. So that's not good. Go back and trim that down. When you fold those over, they should not overlap. So again, I didn't cut that right, so I'm going to make sure before I glue everything down that those little flaps are not overlapping at all. This little pocket fits nicely right at the bottom of the front of flap number one. I'm going to go ahead here and remove my double-sided tape. And this is where adding a little bit of wet glue on this part really, really saves you from <laughs> trying to put that little pocket nice and straight at the bottom of the flap. So this is a really good tip and uh, I'll mention it a few times here just to make sure that you guys know that this is a really good option. So he see here it's, it's really hard to um, put it down um, and make sure that everything is nice and flat. So the little uh, extra time that I have to wiggle my little piece down is perfect. 
So here I'm showing you that if you don't add a piece of pattern paper all the way down the pocket, when you start putting pieces down inside your pocket, they're going to snag on those little folded edges that we just created for that pocket. So definitely put your piece of paper all the way down and make sure that it's secured all the way inside the pocket. That way when you're adding your pieces or your elements, your your picture my life cards or whatever you want to put inside your card, they're not going to snag. So here, while we're doing little pockets, I'll show you how to do the other pocket. So we've got two pockets, one on flap number one and another pocket that goes on the inside, the middle piece of your mini album. So I've done the same thing here. I've added double-sided tape. I'm folding over all of my edges, making sure that they're not overlapping, giving them a nice crease because you want to make sure everything is nice and flat. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adhere this to the bottom of the center. And I'm leaving equal distance at the bottom and I'm centering that piece. You also want to make sure that your top flap, when it closes, you don't see that little pocket. Um, I guess I just got lucky with this. and um, Or maybe I did test it, I don't remember. But you don't want to see the pocket when the top flap is down. So I'm going to hear that right in the center, leaving the same amount of space at the bottom and on either side. And there you have it. It's nice and tucked away. And I always go back and I always use my bone folder and fold everything down. So these pockets, we're going to add a few little um, accordion photo mats. I really like this style because it gives you opportunities to use those pretty PML cards and to add a whole bunch of photos. Now in this particular pocket you could probably do two of these, but I just wanted to show you how to at least put one inside of that pocket. Because I'm using a 12, uh, 12 by 12 piece of craft, I had to add that top piece in order to create my trifold element here. So I'm just making sure everything is nice and flush and it opens perfectly. And the next thing we'll do is add a few photo mats and or photo placement, I should say, and we'll add PML cards. So this little pocket here is a little bit different. I wanted to give it um, kind of like an angled edge. So I started off with a square piece I did score it on the left side and the bottom and then I just used my paper trimmer and the top portion I placed it at the one inch mark and then the bottom was just flush with the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead here and add a little bit more of um, double sided tape and we're going to complete this cute little pocket. It gives it a different element than just another straight pocket. So I'm going to fold those over. And very much like all of the other ones, I'm going to cut or miter off that corner to remove the bulk. Now you can also cut it into a little square and remove that little square piece, but I just prefer having a mitered corner where everything is nice and flush. So the last thing you want to do here is cut the excess off from the top, and we're going to add this to the left inside panel. Now I don't, I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning I had told you not to put that pattern piece of paper down inside that flap. And the reason why is that once the pocket is down, you want to add that pattern paper underneath so that when you're adding your elements, such as this one that's coming up, you don't want it to snag on the inside pieces of that little pocket. Not sure if that makes sense to you, but there is rhyme and reasons for putting pe uh, pieces of paper down in a specific order. So this little trifold came together very nicely and I'm going to add some photos and some PML cards and we're going to put that in there. So you see here how I'm struggling a little bit to get it inside. It's because it's catching on the inside of that pocket. So let's talk about this 
closure. So the closure was done with uh, craft paper and this beautiful embossing folder. And I'm just going to wrap that around my, my little book to make sure that it's nice and closed. I want that seam at the front because I'll add my little shaker element on top to cover that seam. I did make my little um, shaker element off camera. I added beautiful seashell um, sequins and I also added those um, beautiful um, stars um, sequins as well. So it was a lot of fun. So next up here, and I've done this on a previous project. I just really love that look with this particular paper pack. So I'm separating that in two and then I'm separating all of the little pieces individually so I can create a little um, nest or a little bunch of threads all together. So I'm going to add those to the top of um, the belly band or um, I'm just going to move my little uh, shaker element and I'm going to put a little cluster or a little bunch at the top and then a little bunch at the bottom. I just really like the look of it. It just gives you that really beachy feel and it, it's just a fun thing to do um, and it just works really well. So I'm going to add that down. I'm going to tack it down with a little bit of liquid glue and I'm going to add my little shaker element and we're going to set that aside and let it dry. So I did fuss with it a little bit because it's kind of like random but I think that's what makes it look really really cool. So we're going to add our little shaker element to the front and again make sure that you've got that seam on the top so that you don't see a seam at the back of your book. Nobody will ever know how you close that off. So see how that's cute? I really like that shaker element. So lastly here we're going to add to the front a few of those die cut pieces and I just glued them down on the top and then I'm going to go inside here and now and add just like the remainder of the pieces that I didn't um, do previously. I did cut some of this uh, production or this assembly down so that um, it wouldn't be taken up your entire day to watch the video but all in all it took me about an hour and let's call it an hour and a half to cut um, uh, sorry not to cut but to assemble this entire little album so for a mil mini album I would say that that's pretty reasonable so here I'm adding those PML cards I'm doubling them up with photo mats and again I am using my mink ink here and I'm just going to go ahead and put them in this in, on the flaps of the book. So there are a few elements that are going down together and they're quite repetitive so I'm going to kind of speed this along but you kind of get the idea that you're just decorating the inside of the uh, tri-fold or the accordion fold um, photo mats and you're just adhering everything down with um, Tombow liquid glue. I would not use um, double-sided tape unless you have uh, something that's really sturdy but the liquid glue here on the um, the actual craft paper worked really really nicely. So we're gonna add, and you, you can see that by adding just a little bit of that um, sapphire cardstock it just looks really really pretty. So I'm going to add here the rest of the, my PML cards and my photo placements and that's still the inside of the top flap. So we're almost done here believe it or not. For a mini album again I can't stress how fast this is. So we're going to go ahead on the uh, left side here and we're going to add our little photo placement and our 3x4 um, PML cards. I really like how this photo, these little photo elements came together, these little accordion or um, trifold little photo mats. They really highlight the 4x3 photos and those really cute PML cards and then they tuck away nicely inside this mini album. Them are unique so you can definitely change it up to match your particular vacation or you can give this to a friend that's going on a trip or something like that. So this was just a really cool and fun project to put together. 
So I'm almost done here. I'm just going to keep on adding a little bit of mink ink all over my um, my PML cards. I decided not to put it on the photo placement because those are going to be swapped out anyways. The centerpiece here is large enough to accommodate a 4x6 photo or a PML card as you can see and then we're just going to go ahead very much the same way and add those 3x4 photo mats, uh, the journaling spot so if you're like me and sometimes you want to keep your journaling a little private it's a really nice way to tuck it inside that little pocket um, it's really a nice way to finish off this book so this next step here I kind of skipped over it because I just wanted to show you the finished product I just went ahead and I added all of those pretty die cuts and all of those stickers but the finished product is what I'm sure you're wanting to see. So here it is all done up with all of the pretty elements. You've got the trifold accordion style uh, photo mats here that tuck away really nicely inside of that little side pocket. You've got a top pocket here that can accommodate a 4x6 photo mat. And then this really cool element that just opens up and you see all of the beautiful photos inside. This centerpiece here is very much the same way you've got a really cool trifold or accordion style photo mat. So I really hope you've enjoyed uh, this cute little mini album and you give it a try. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I invite you to do so and don't forget to click that grey bell to receive notifications for my next projects. Have a wonderful day and see you all very soon. Thank you.